our Lord says, surely I am coming quickly. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son Jesus Christ at his coming may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now, when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name. 
like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me, and your throne shall be established forever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing would be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Annunciation. This is the honest grace of her body, that she is afraid and in this moment does not hide her fear, that as the pink-robed angel bends before her pure with the power of lightness, she wants to turn away. She cannot look into the angel's graven face. Because the child meant to form in her will change her. Because all she has known will dissolve, pulling back from her like water. For there is so little softness in me, she thinks, and my hands are simply empty, my hands that don't know how to fill. I am no more than these shadows now, darkening the garden no more than these rigid, frightened hands. She bows her head, her arms are crossed against her brittle ribs. The lilies should have closed by now, she thinks, and still they have not closed. Look how they breathe, such white hungers, wide mouths, and she who must enter the fear of her waiting, the door of her waiting, no longer wants to see them breathing, their smoothness like the angel's steady face. She would lie down on the stone floor and curl up there without thinking, until in the cave of her body she might feel without willing it, a tenderness begin to form, like the small ghostly clover of the meadow, the deer hidden in the hills, a tenderness like mourning. The source of love, she thinks, is mourning. That wordless loss by which we come to see the opening of these lilies, this doorway arching onto gardens, the child that will soon form inside her body, this loss by which we come to bend before the given, its arms 
that open the unexplained and take us in. The poet tells a story. The poet writes theology for us. The poet, this poet, Laurie Shank, whom I did not know before this poem, puts flesh onto a line in the creed. Poets take us to places where scripture cannot. Poets, this poet has taken us to a place where painting does not, but it's poets and artists, painters, musicians, who take us more deeply into the mysteries of our faith. They take us to those places where we might not be otherwise able to access something that God wants us to know and to learn and to live. We know what this poet knows because we have looked at our hands before and known them to be empty. We have felt our ribs before and known them to be brittle. We have held our breaths. This body, this, these bodies, like this body, the body that this poet knows. This body acknowledges a very great grace knows that a very great grace is inside, is deep, somewhere deep inside. And it is a mystery. The word for today is annunciation. Today's mystery is annunciation. That's what we call this portion of the scripture. Annunciation is just a it's just a fancy church word that means announcement. But we use fancy church words to speak of the central tenets of our faith, those, those mysteries that serve as the spine for our Christian faith. Annunciation, incarnation, transfiguration, resurrection. These are all mysteries. Poet Scott Cairns, who is an Orthodox Christian, says, I have one rule. If I understand it, it is not a mystery. And as much as we want to be able to understand something, we want to understand those things of God, some must remain mysteries for us. Another writer, um, a, uh, a Dominican friar, a Roman Catholic, I believe, has written that Christian mysteries are events in the life of Christ, celebrated as stories in the Gospels, meant to be lived by believers. Events in the life of Christ, celebrated as stories in the Gospels, and meant to be lived by believers. So how do we live annunciation as believers? How do we live announcement? If you were a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout, and maybe they do it in other places, perhaps you were someplace in a really hot, refectory or dining room or mess tent in August at lunchtime, waiting on the counselor to come to the front because you were expecting mail back in the days when there was mail. <laughs> and here comes the counselor or the camp director, and you all sing announcements, announcements, announcements. What a terrible way to die, a terrible way to die. 
a terrible way, a terrible death to talk to death, a terrible way to die. Yes, anyone else? <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> Announcements. Uh, just us? Man, you all missed out. <laughs> you missed out. Announcements. Yeah. A terrible death to die. Even announcements at church sometimes, trust me, feels like <laughs> a terrible death to die. But <laughs> the point here is announcements and death. Dying a death. On the blotter in my office, I've for several years been tearing off, but writing back on it, a line from Thomas Merton, Advent is the beginning of the end of all that is not in Christ. Advent is the beginning of the end of all that is not in Christ. This to me implies that somewhere there is a death that somewhere in us there must be a death. Something must die so that the fullness of that which is Christ can begin to come, a dying. Thomas Merton, that sometimes cantankerous, but um, well, he was, a monk. he was a Roman Catholic monk, sometimes cantankerous, but oh my goodness, the places he will take you, also wrote about, here's the French, Chuck, Le Point Vierge. Okay, now I don't know French, but Le Point Vierge is the virgin point. The virgin point. And he wrote, it is the point at which I can meet God in a real, and experimental contact, this little point of nothingness and absolute poverty is the pure glory of God in us. That virgin point, that blank slate, the place of poverty where there is nothing inside of us, the pure glory of God. He went on to write, it is like a pure diamond blazing with the invisible light of heaven. Hold on to your seats. It is in everybody. And if we could see it, we would see these billion points of light coming together in the face and blaze of a sun that would, com that would make all of the darkness and cruelty of life vanish completely. Mary serves as the virgin point for the Christian tradition. Well, she serves as many things in the Christian tradition. She serves as something that we, we you know, in the church, we want to put this onto her because we need her to serve as something. Sometimes we need her to be you know, meek and mild and obedient. We put that on her and say, okay, all you women, meek and mild and obedient. That's just one of the things we put in her. And then what does Luke do but to put into her mouth, he has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. So much for putting on, putting on, projecting on, just be this. She stands before us as this. But she also stands before us as Le Point Vierge, the virgin point. And her emptiness and her obedience, her emptiness and her obedience serve as that place where the word can come in and be made flesh. And here's the paradox. Not only is this Le Point Vierge empty so word can be made flesh, it is full. Hail Mary, full of grace. It is full of grace, it is full of faith. So it is both empty and it is full. It is full of faith 
and the willingness to be loved by God. She was loved by God in a very particular way. And we too, when we claim the faith of Mary, and even when we don't, are loved by God in a very particular way. Inside of Mary, inside of us, this temple, this temple, that temple. We hear about the temple in the reading from the Old Testament. We hear about King David. We hear about the time when King David has defeated all of his enemies. The two kingdoms of Judea and Israel are now joined together. He's living in a house of cedar, but the glory, the Shekinah, the glory of God has remained only in the tent in the wilderness and the tabernacle. No permanent home for the glory of God. And David says, let's build a house for God. And God says, no, you will not build me a house. Solomon, his son, builds the house. You will not build me a house. I will make of you a house, says the Lord God. I will make of you a house. Meaning, I will make of you a dynasty. And so, through the generations, we hear the word of the city of David, in the house of David. Mary is this house of David. When we sing on Wednesday evening, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. That is our desire to be with Mary, to stand with Mary, to say, ah, oh, yes, let me claim la pointe verge. Let me claim the virgin point so that I can be that place. I can be both empty to be filled, and I can be full, full of grace and faith. This body, your body, the, the temple, you know how we speak about the body as being the temple of the Lord. This body, with all its creaky bits and the shaky bits, and the, the jiggly bits and the, you know, the, the, the extra bits that aren't supposed to be there now, the bits that have gotten old, that body. And this character, the character with all its foibles, my character with all my foibles, with all my character flaws and yours, into this one, this house. As we prayed, a mansion prepared for you, Lord. Let find in us a mansion prepared. Mary was able to say a word from that very deep place, from that virgin point. She was able to say yes, for she was profoundly known and loved by God. That place, the place of a million diamonds. She spoke a word and she changed her life forever. Yes. She spoke a word and changed our lives forever. Yes. On this day of the Annunciation of Announcement, we ask ourselves, are we virgin enough to respond from our deepest, truest selves and say something new, to say a yes. 
that will change us forever. Ave Maria Magdalena. Hail Mary Magdalene Parish. Hail favored one. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Standing, let us affirm our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in the bulletin. Rejoicing with Mary that the word comes among us, let us offer to God our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find in Mary, the servant of the Lord, the model of our heart's willing surrender to God's call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we discover in true spiritual purity the richness of what God alone can do to make Christ come alive in Mary, in us, and in all the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God of mystery, who dwells in unapproachable light, draw us more and more deeply into the path of divine wisdom beyond all human expectation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our assembly of disciples be a womb and a place for the shaping of Christ by God's power so that we may give birth to Christ from the womb of our community for the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our deepest hearts find strength in the gift of blessed hope that what God has begun to do in our world and in all our persons by Christ's saving work will be brought to its fullness by our Savior. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we rem remember before God all who are in any need and who cry for the presence of God. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this time, you may offer your own petitions and or thanksgiving silently or out loud. ask you to pray for those parishioners and those in our community 
who during this time of Advent and Christmas are grieving over losses in their families, over events beyond their control. I ask your prayers for the candidates for Bishop Coadjutor in this diocese. Please pray for them, for their spouses, for their families, and for their parishes. I your prayers for an end to violence. Pray for peace. Call us to yourself, O God, as you called Mary, that we may be formed into a dwelling of holiness, giving life to all the peoples of the world through Mary's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us come to God with sorrow for our sins, asking for help and strength that we may know ourselves, saying together, Lord, let me hear the call of your prophet John the Baptist, that I may truly repent and be converted, that what is crooked in me may become straight, let what is rough become smooth, and what is empty be filled. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God, Lord, grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Christopher, if you'll get to a mic, I'm, Christopher, I'll, I'm going to ask you to talk about your concert tonight. Um, Christopher, get Christopher to get to a mic so he can get ready. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Episcopal Church. If you are a guest or a visitor with us this morning, we would love to get the opportunity to welcome you. Do we have any guests or visitors this morning? Anyone who wouldn't mind introducing themselves? I know we have a couple. Yes, ma'am. Would you tell us your name and where you're from? From Richmond, Virginia, welcome. It's good to have you with us. Welcome. Anyone else? Okay. I see our young Cards. children are coming in. Visitor cards. Visitor cards, yes. Thank you. Our young children are coming in. If you are looking for someone, missing someone in your family, raise your hand or feel free to stand up so that they can see you. Um, there are visitors, visitor cards um, in your pews. Um, if you don't have one in the pew, they're in the back of the church or someone will hand one to you. But I'd like for you to take the opportunity to fill out the card so that we can get your name and your address um, so that we can keep you on our mailing list and keep you up to date um, with what is happening in the ministries here at St. Mary Magdalene. You can simply fill out one half of the card and just tear it off and, and deposit it into the um, offering plate. Also, the pledge um, envelopes are in the back of the church if you would pick those up for us because um, we wanted to try to get them out as soon as we can as, um, so we don't have to worry about that over Christmas. Um, I guess there's part of us that wants to you know, load more mail into the mail that's already going up for Christmas cards. So 
help us keep it from being able to do that and pick up your, your um, pledge envelopes in the back. Also, if you look inside your, um, your bulletin, there is a listing of the um, services for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, and you may also, please, I encourage you to pick one of these up. The ushers will hand these to you in the back of the church. Please take two or three or four of them. Take one of them and put it on your refrigerator so you can remember what time church we will have church for Christmas Eve and then also for Christmas Day. And most importantly, take a couple so that you can hand them out to individuals who might be looking for a place to worship during Christmas. And it'll give them an opportunity to feel welcomed and you can even write something on the back and invite them. Um, you can even mail this to them if you would like. I get kind of running out of time to do that. but. Please feel free to personally invite someone to come and share Christmas service with us here at St. Mary Magdalene. The services are at 5, 7, and 10. The 5 o'clock service is um, traditionally referred to as the family service. There will be a children's pageant that will be held at that. And then at both the 7 and the 10 o'clock service, we will have um, a festival choral Eucharist um, and celebrating Christmas. And then on Christmas Day, one service only, 10 o'clock, Christmas Day, 10 o'clock. Um, you have a wonderful program going on tonight for us. So talk okay. to us about that, Christopher, please. Okay, this this evening um, will be the first performance of uh, uh, the Broward Youth Choir, a little community choir that I started uh, this year. And um, it it's basically uh, children between the ages of, uh, well, seven and uh, high school and 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 they're just we're we just prepared uh, uh, about four pieces to sing uh, and um, for a lot of them this is their first time singing in front of people it's so, <laughs> so your support would be greatly appreciated I I also um, have some of my piano students who are who will be playing uh, before them and a little recorder ensemble so it's uh just a little wonderful thing that we put together and uh, uh, it'd be nice to see some people from St. Mary Magdalene's attend. It'd be great. Kay. Christopher, thank you for putting this together and sure. pulling this um, community <laughs> choir together. <laughs> I'll applaud oh. you for that. <laughs> so sure, it, it's at 6 o'clock tonight. 6 o'clock tonight. Uh -huh. 6 o'clock tonight. So uh, right here. <laughs> right here, right here. St. Mary Magdalene. So TiVo the ball game. Come here. And, um, and, and attend the choir so that the young people, the children, can feel supported by this community. We want to thank you for that. Um, Mother Cynthia, you have an announcement, I believe. A number of us have really enjoyed the postings that our fellow parishioners have been making on the, the blog that you can find on the parish website. Starting Christmas Day, I will post not Advent things, but if you will send pictures of the nativity scenes at home or your crash at home, whatever you have, uh, if you'll send them to me, I'll post those for the 12 days of Christmas. I've already received a couple of pictures from one of the five o'clock uh, parishioners. So just send those to the email address that's in the, uh, that's in the bulletin and I'll get those posted for the 12 days of Christmas. I also wanted to say that the picture that you have uh, didn't, didn't turn out terribly well. I, I couldn't get it out to, to copy it directly, but um, the title of this picture is Incarnation, and you could not see the title in, the, uh, in the, the handout that you got. You couldn't see that at all. It's titled Incarnation. I like the fact that um, it looks either like he's saying welcome or he's pushing the womb and making more room for all of us. Um, this was given to me a number of years ago, done by a Roman Catholic nun somewhere up the Hudson in New York. Yes, did anyone bring the baby Jesuses from their crushes to bless? Okay. So you're gonna take pictures of the crushes? Yeah, if, it, if they take pictures of their crushes and send them to me, okay. we'll do that. 
Uh, one last announcement I would like to make is um, I wanted to con thank you for your continued support of me um, in my ministry to the homeless here in Broward County and in South Florida. And I am grateful to um, all of you for your support and your words of encouragement, um, the financial support that you have provided um, and, and, and sent my way. Um, and I also wanted to mention that we took a collection a couple of weeks ago here at St. Mary Magdalene to raise funds um, for the sole purpose of putting food in the hands and the mouths of hungry people um, here in South Florida. And this parish, um, we uh, collected $3,500 in order to do that. That's, that's, that's incredible. And because um, there were some generous people who had put up the opportunity for matching grant money on that, we have turned that $3,500 into $7,000. So that really worked out well, so thank you. Is there anyone celebrating a birthday, a wedding anniversary, or traveling? We invite you to come forward for a blessing. Birthdays, wedding anniversaries, and travel. <laughs> Happens every year, doesn't it? Just Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to have to have a talk here. Gosh. It's going to snow here at St. Mary Magdalene on Christmas Eve. Did I tell you that? Watch over your child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise him up if he falls. And in his heart may the peace which passes all understanding abide with him all the days of his life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What? <laughs> Time to travel. Okay. This is a round trip blessing, so you have to come back. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Travel safely. Enjoy your Christmas holidays. Return to us safely. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
pray Thanksgiving continues with Eucharistic Prayer B and can be found on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your Son to redeem us from sin and death, Make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearance. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
thanksgiving, let us pray the post-communion prayer found on the final page of your bulletin, praying together. God, our Father, whose Son was born into the world to free us from sin and death and to bring us to everlasting life, purify us by his perfect sacrifice, that when he comes in power and glory, we may greet him without shame or fear, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.